So here we come up to Luxor. There's this big old black pyramid right over here. And uh, this is a good time to start talking about pyramid schemes. So we're here in Las Vegas and uh, we're standing in front of the famous Luxor Pyramid. And so we thought it was really appropriate to talk about pyramid schemes because there's quite a few of them springing up, aren't there, Dave? Yeah, there is. I mean, you know, there's gold and silver, which is honest money, as we both agree, has, like any financial instrument, there's good and bad in it. And some of the bad is uh, fraudulent mining companies is one. And you also have these pyramid schemes. Why don't you go on and uh, explain what it is and what happens in most of these things? Well, basically 82% of the wealth, roughly, is transferred to only 18% of the people. Uh, you join one, you're on the bottom level. You have to bring in, and, and when you join one, you're paying like twice as much or three times as much or four times as much as you should be for your bullion. And a large percentage of that is transferred to the people up at the top of this pyramid. Uh, and the people that start the pyramid also are taking some of this. So they're the ones that really get wealthy off of this. Everybody is paying them, and they never go out of the top of this pyramid. They, they are sitting above everybody permanently. Uh, but uh, you come in at the bottom, you pay a whole bunch for your coins, uh, you sign something where you're promising basically to, to buy every single month one of these coins or ten of these coins, whatever it is, for X amount, whatever that, the price is. And then it's your job to go out and find two more p suckers <laughs> and drag them in below you and you get a little piece of the excess uh, profits above the spot price uh, and then you know, the rest is flowing up to the people that are still above you. And, uh, and after you, they get people below them, you're now supposed to be getting your silver for free. But what happens is there comes a, an end to every bull market. And 82% of, of the people that have just come in don't end up breaking even. They end up transferring some of their wealth to the top 18%. And it's taken place even in the uh, rare coin world now. I've got actually a friend of mine, not a close friend, that said, you know, take a look at this. And I told him, no way. You know, it was, yeah. pay, you know, pay a lot for rare coin anyway, and you really have to know what you're doing. And it's really outside of my field of expertise. I just basically leave that field alone yeah. to others. But, you know, here's a guy that, uh, entrepreneur in uh, quotation marks, right. decided, hey, I can make this even better by selling, you know, the rare coin of the month kind of thing. Yeah, and you know, if you're paying all this excess over spot or over the collectible, the normal numismatic value of a coin, if it's a collector coin, uh, when you get to the top, to whom do you sell? Yeah, right. <laughs> you would have to invent a reverse pyramid yeah. <laughs> to unload these things on the way down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody's going to lose and they're going to lose big time. So uh, I don't like them myself. Yeah. So I just want you to be careful when you invest in anything, let alone the precious metals. You've got areas of concern. I mean, there's the mining companies that are very hard to analyze, especially the small juniors. You've got the coin world, which has got some questionable activity in it. And then you've also got some of these, you know, you buy one or two or 10 coins, whatever it is, and get two of your friends to join. It sounds great on the surface, but know what you're doing. Basically, I like Occam's razor. Keep it simple. You know, know what you're buying, pay a fair price to the dealer, start small till you're comfortable, and go on with from there. Uh, most of these other type of schemes, so basically, to my knowledge, never work out for you. And after all, Mike and I are looking after you. Yeah, um, you know, uh, read our books. Uh, in my book, there's a big section on uh, things to beware of. And, uh, and I talk about leverage in my book, and I'm not going to say I disapprove of it. I'm free market. If you want to use leverage, use it. But be careful. Know what you're doing. The yeah. problem with most of these type of things is people get excited. They want to get in the market. They think, geez, I, I missed it. It's already moved, so I'm going to take advantage of this like leverage yeah. and catch up. Believe me, that doesn't work most of the time. Once in a great while, if you hit it just right and you're lucky, it might work. But in most cases, it works to your disadvantage, not yeah. your advantage. Leverage is a professional's game. <laughs> right. uh, it, it's very dull on the way up, but it cuts like a surgical laser mm. on the way down. Yeah. Uh, I personally don't know anybody that, except 
Dave, <laughs> but um, all the people that I know that got involved with leveraged trading accounts on physical gold and silver have lost, and they lost big time. So anyway, uh, that's it for now, and I think we're going to head off to the stratosphere for dinner shortly. Thanks. Yeah.